G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy as we continue this series doing individual videos on 2024 AFL Draft Prospects. If you want to see other players I've done in this series, this should be number 20. Click up in the top right corner and you'll find a list of every player I've done so far. So today we're doing Sam Lawler. It's taken me a long time to get to the guy that is likely to go pick one as it currently stands in the national draft that happens on November 20th. And I'll say that he is a player that I've admired for a long time. Back in the day when West Coast held pick three and we had hopes of drafting an elite midfielder, Sam Lawler was one of my favorites early on. And in the end, it probably doesn't matter because I do expect he likely goes pick one in this year's draft. Although interestingly, it's not as though he's unanimously ranked as the number one player in this year's draft, which we'll get to. So there is still the possibility he doesn't go pick one, but let's talk about him as a prospect. So he is a gun inside midfielder slash impactful forward, particularly in the air. At 188 centimeters, he's great above his head and his aerial game probably belies his height there. I wouldn't describe him as being like Harley Reid as a prospect. However, both are similar in the sense that they're about six foot two and really strong one-on-one -on -one in aerial threats when they do go forward, despite not really having a big height advantage on their opponents. But he's a player that plays quite narrow. So what I mean by that is he's either impactful you know, deep and close to goal or in a stoppage situation. And perhaps he can still work on his outside game, which we will elaborate on further in this video. But to describe him, big bodied, powerful, contested midfielder, great defensive game. He's a really animalistic tackler, which I really enjoy. And further than that, when he goes forward, his that contested game really comes to the fore where he's really strong in the air and kicks goals as well. So there is a whole heap of upside with Sam Lawler based on two factors. One is he hasn't had a lot of luck with injury. I think he's battled groin issues throughout this year. And then towards the end of the year, did a season ending hamstring injury, which ruled him out for 12 to 14 games and ultimately meant he couldn't test at the draft combine. But because of that, his ability to impact consistently, despite having such limited preparation and, and the ability to get to full fitness, his output has been outstanding. And perhaps he's a contributing reason as to why he plays narrow. So he's really dangerous in a stopping situation and he's really dangerous playing close to goal. But perhaps he hasn't had the opportunity to build that fitness base to play more as an outside sort of midfielder who can get from contest to contest. So like I said, there's upside there. There's also the fact that he was a highly rated cricketing junior, which meant that over summer, he he would play a full cricketing summer and that would in turn impact his ability to join in and do a full footy pre-season. So the fact that he was focusing on two sports at the same time shows that upside because once he gets in a professional environment, it implies there'll be some rapid improvement there. So super impactful, uses that big frame to his advantage. He is quite ready-made for an under 18 prospect. He doesn't look like an 18 year old physically. And that does give him a little bit of an advantage, but he is also really clean and it has really punchy foot skills delivering the ball inside 50, but also his hands, the amount of times he can release teammates with a really well-weighted hand pass is really quite impressive and speaks to the fact that he'll probably be a good AFL midfielder. He's also quite aggressive and tenacious. So like I said, it's not just the fact that he's winning clearances by himself. His closing speed and his tackling intensity is really impressive too, and he can set the tone big time on field. This year in the Coates Talent League, he averaged about 23 disposals, 6.3 clearances, and six inside 50s, bearing in mind some of that time would have been spent in the forward line. Like I said, there's also some injury interruptions through this year. I think there was a hip complaint, uh, but I think in one of his return games for Geelong Grammar, he kicked seven goals three, which evidences his ability to hit the scoreboard. For Vic Country as well against the Allies, he had another game where he had 16 touches and kicked three goals. So his ability to impact, despite not necessarily being presumably fully fit, is quite strong because of his ability to play in the forward line as well. Said he was unfortunate to miss out on the draft combine because of that hamstring injury. Naturally, I think the, the concerns around his athleticism will not be around like speed off the mark or explosiveness or perhaps even agility, but it might be around that 2km time trial, which they were unable to test. But let's summarize his strengths and his weaknesses. First of all, his clean hands. Like I said, you see him in a stoppage situation and his ability to you know, be a one-touch player, but also release the handball quite well. That is perhaps an underrated skill when we're talking about inside midfield prospects. He's got good kicking penetration as well. Like I said, his delivery inside 50 can be really clean. He can hit those well-weighted kicks really well and the ball moves at a nice velocity. The power and physicality is probably his one wood as well. Like I said, he's got that advantage at under 18 level that may not be the case for a little while at AFL level. That being said, it just might take him a little bit of time before he's ragdolling players at AFL level, but he seems to have the genetic potential to be a very big body midfielder at AFL level too. Scoreboard impact and defensive pressure, these are things that he really brings to the table. He doesn't mind a little bit of a fend off too. Like I said, he's got that physical advantage. And again, to draw a Harley Reid comparison as a big bodied midfielder that seems to have a strength advantage over his opponents, it allows him to absorb that pressure knowing that he can probably shrug off a tackle and he won't be able to do that straight away at AFL level. But the benefit to him 
being able to almost break the lines purely by shrugging off opponents and getting the ball into a better position is a huge asset. And he has that versatility to play forward as well and uh, been a very impactful aerial threat for Vic Country. So he's got two main question marks on him. The first one is probably that durability piece. The fact that he keeps getting injured naturally, you, you probably throw the same concern over guys like Sid Draper and Finn O'Sullivan. Now, these guys have probably just been a little bit unlucky to this date. And I don't think he's a natural endurance athlete. So we'll point out endurance is probably another thing that he can work on. And it's a little bit hard to assess with him. He spent so much of this year in particular quite underdone, but he has the versatility to be able to play forward, which is a less taxing position in terms of running and still impact. So he's been able to dominate even if he hasn't been fully fit. We just haven't given him that opportunity yet to prove himself in terms of how well can he run out of four quarter game in the midfield. And perhaps, you know, improving that evasiveness. Again, is that a fitness thing? If he's fully fit, is he able to be more evasive? At the moment, he does kind of rely a little bit on his physicality, which like I said, will be a challenge at AFL level when he doesn't have that strength advantage. That being said, I did say the same thing about Harley Reid. I didn't think he would have a physical strength advantage at AFL level, but he threw a combination of technique and I suppose strength. Harley was able to do that at AFL level earlier than expected and Sam could be the same. So what is his draft range? Well, this one might be a slam dunk in the sense that he's the current favorite to be pick one. However, it's not absolutely set in stone. And as I record this, we're still five days out from the draft and things do change late, or at least we hear about them late. Interestingly though, despite the fact that he's the favorite to go pick one, Cal Toomey ranks him at number five, as does Fox Footy. It'd be interesting to consider the possibility that if he doesn't go pick one, how far does he go? Do North select him? Do Carlton select him? Carlton might have their eye on Sid Draper or Finn O'Sullivan. It is quite even. So I suppose it begs the question, why is Sam Lawler likely to go pick one. Well, in that sense, it only matters what Richmond think. And I'd imagine the logic being he's got, probably got the highest upside, in my opinion, of any of the draft prospects in that top range, which is saying something because Sid Draper, Finn O'Sullivan all have a really high upside. But I think in terms of building a midfield from scratch, Sam Lawler as that dynamic player who could float forward and be a real impact, I can see the appeal to Richmond. According to The Age, recruiting sources believe Richmond are deciding between Lawler and Finn O'Sullivan with Jagger Smith another possibility. So what is his range? Well, you'd say obviously he can go pick one and is likely to go pick one as it currently stands. How far would he slide? It's hard to imagine him getting past, you know, the Adelaide Crows. Uh, I've seen a link to the Crows inside that top five. And then Melbourne as well, um, considering their interest in Harley, who is not exactly a like for like, but a similar sort of dynamic, powerful player who can play forward. It's hard to imagine he gets past about pick six. So we'll broadly say one to six, but I feel very comfortable that whatever team drafts him in this year's draft will be getting a very good prospect. And in my opinion, he should go pick one. So let me know in the comments, guys, what do you think of Sam Lula as a prospect? Do you think he's overrated? Do you think he's underrated? Looking forward to hearing your input and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.